Hey folks, this is Ilar. In this video, I want to offer some guidance and practices that I follow while playing the Tech Tree Tier 9 German battleship, the Friedrich der Große, or the Freddy. Uh, now, this is a ship that's been very unpopular in the game for a long time, ever since she was introduced back in August 2016. Uh, in fact, a lot of players just tell people to skip the Freddy altogether in their grind up the uh, German battleship line, go straight from the Bismarck to the core first. Uh, but I found that the Freddy is quite playable and she's picked up a number of buffs in the last year uh, to her accuracy, to her secondary battery performance, as well as to her reload. So I found that she's more playable now, certainly than she was when she was first introduced. Uh, in fact, I recently reground the German battleship line for the research points, uh, moving through the Freddy in nine battles going eight and one and delivering about 120,000 per game. So I'm gonna have some gameplay from a couple of matches that I had with her uh, that will highlight three factors that for me affect uh, my success uh, in playing her. And then I'll go to port and I'll offer a little bit of guidance on my build and some ideas that you may wanna consider uh, in terms of uh, build choices. So the first item here is accuracy. Uh, thanks to her buffs, especially to the German battleship accuracy buff at the end of last year, she is much more accurate than she used to be. In fact, I just landed a 17k salvo on the Freddy, and then this next salvo that I'm going to put out on the North Carolina at almost 16 kilometers is going to be very strong as well. So the key here is aiming well, and with only eight rifles, the aiming is more critical uh, in order to land shells on target. Uh, so if you are still sort of working with the aiming practices, I suggest going either into the training room or into co-op and, you know, get yourself more comfortable with her ballistics and lead and using the, the, um, the radical correctly as I land a double citadel with uh, five of eight shells at 16 kilometers on the North Carolina. And then at the end of this match, I'm going to fire off a, what I think is a 17 or 18 kilometer salvo on this speed boosting uh, Bragon, and let's see how this one goes. That was five of eight shells taking out the battleship to end the game and win uh, the match for our team. So she is definitely can, she definitely can make her shots uh, and aiming to me is the most important aspect in terms of improving that. Obviously RNG is still a factor. That's true for all ships. Uh, but like I said, because she did get a dispersion a buff at the end of 2019, uh, she is much more playable. So in this match, we're going to highlight the two other aspects, at least for me, that make a big difference in succeeding in her, and that is situational awareness and positioning. Now, these factors affect all ships, not just the Freddy, uh, but the Freddy is... Per at least to me feels like particularly sensitive to these factors because she has relatively few guns and because she's a huge target and she's easy to focus down uh, in terms of landing shots um, being aware of what's going on around you and deciding what to do and where to position and and how to respond to the conditions is very very important so i'll i'll point out here the pulmon that is to myself he's doing exactly what you should not do He's pushing in against a superior flank. Now, this ended up being the weak flank for our team. And once this Pomeran goes down, it will be even weaker. And I will be the only battleship on this side. Uh, this is the strong flank for the opponents. And so I had already realized that I can't be up front doing, trying to be the big, bad, brawling German battleship because these are not the conditions to do it. And there goes our Pomeran. And now everybody's going to start shooting at me. So I'm going to rotate here and kite and basically slow the flank. And this is something that I found the Freddy is particularly good at. She has very good armor. She has a very strong stern. Uh, she has a 90 millimeter plate that doesn't go quite all the way to the end of the stern, um, but it does allow her to tank to stern tank very effectively. And so I'm just basically going to go into a kiting posture here. In fact, I will slow to the point though I will actually start backing up at points because I'm trying to draw the opponents in toward me where my secondaries can be focused on them and the dispersion becomes less of an issue as I can land more shots. 
So I don't, at this point, in some sense, I don't care that I'm being targeted by four. I know at least three of them are battleships and probably the Buffalo. Um, the Pomern, I don't care about because I've got my stern directly toward her. Her 380 uh, millimeter AP can't do too much to my stern. Uh, the Freddy is going to push across here. Boy, that was a really terrible dispersion. Uh, reminded me of the old dispersion characteristics of the Freddy. Uh, so my bigger concern is going to be the Freddy, the Georgia, and the Iowa, uh, which have the uh, caliber uh, to be able to uh, penetrate me a little more strongly than the Pomeran will be able to. Uh, and my role here in the kiting, like I said, I have very good armor. I, if I let the opponents draw themselves into me and where my secondaries can go to work, and I'm going to get some broadside shots here, like on this Freddy, and take him out. Um, and I'm basically slowing the flank. So by reading the situation and realizing that I shouldn't be trying to push in and be the big, bad, brawling German battleship in a push situation, uh, this is where I think a lot of players tend to struggle with uh, German battleships and the Freddy in particular um, because of her limited um, you know, main battery firepower and you know, realizing when it makes sense to push in and be the, the tip of the spear and drive the flank and when it's time to back off. So um, I apologize if I sound a little bit like a broken record here, but uh, this to me is when I watch replays from colleagues or other people that ask for my opinion about playing the Freddy and, and in often cases battleships in general, this is the aspect that I tend to find uh, players uh, often struggle with. So I'm going to rotate my attention here to the Iowa who's now coming across broadside. He's now within my secondary battery range. Uh, my problem here is that I'm giving him a lot more side than I'd like. Thankfully the Georgia uh, is not having very good dispersion or he's not aiming well. Uh, and this is an advantage of being in a kiting posture and playing with your, your speed and your 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 uh, rudder is that you'll throw off those shots. Uh, this salvo here on the Iowa wasn't very satisfying at only 7,100 damage. I'm going to move forward here, activate my hydro. We just spotted the Udaloi. I want to make sure that I stay outside her secondary, uh, outside her torpedo range, excuse me. Uh, and this Iowa gets a pretty good chunk of me. Pop my spotter here. This is not for the range. This is to just get a better view on my uh, targeting of the Iowa. And I'm going to land a uh, Citadel and take out 22,000 damage uh, of the uh, of the Iowa. And now the Iowa is throwing his ship away. So right now, even though our team is behind, I feel like in terms of my position and what I'm doing here is exactly what our team needs. Um, to be able to uh, succeed and I'm up to almost 114,000 in damage um, so I felt like I've been very effective here and and reading the situation and being able to defend our team the um, Udaloi is now visible I'm selling away so I stay outside his torpedo range the Georgia goes down we've now finished off all of those battleships that were at um, at Delta uh, partly because uh, I, you know, was able to delay them and absorb the damage for the team. I'm up to 2.7 million tanked, which is exactly what I should do. Now, one thing I should note about my build here is that I burned through all my heals, and I was still running my secondary meme build from the uh, rank sprint game. So I was take I had taken BFT instead of survivability. I'm sorry, instead of uh, superintendent. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to get a salvo off here on the Riga. It got a chunk of him. I'm a little behind in my aim here, but I am going to land three shells and take out a big chunk of him. And then uh, a little, I'll move forward a couple of minutes uh, to when he's trying to flee. I'm going to get a salvo off on him right as he's heading off. Uh, but uh, the Freddy under the right conditions. Oh, coming back to my comment about superintendent as I do finish off the Riga. I'm going to send the Riga uh, a thank you uh, and a well play comment here. Uh, but uh, yeah, the I wish I had, had superintendent so I had an extra heal for this game. And that's what I would recommend. So on that note, I am going to move to the port and we'll talk about my build and her ship characteristics. Okay, here we are in port with the Freddy. I will do a quick walkthrough of her specifications and then I'll get to my ship build and I'll offer some final thoughts. If you guys just want to go straight to my build, uh, just hit the index in the description below and you can just skip to that section right away. 
So starting with the armor, uh, she is a well-armored battleship as is typical for the Germans. She has a 32 millimeter bow and stern, but she's got this 60 millimeter fore end armor belt that basically guarantees she's not gonna get Citadel through the bow, through the bow by anything. Um, so she is very tanky bow on. Uh, her turrets are pretty well protected, 400 millimeter uh, frontal plates. And then she has a 19 millimeter superstructure, which is standard for the German battleships. Um, I mentioned during the replay that she's got this 90 millimeter plate uh, that doesn't go quite all the way to the end of her stern, uh, but this allows her to bounce a lot of stuff and basically tank uh, in a kiting or, or retreating posture uh, quite easily. Her uh, deck is very good. Uh, after a relatively short 32 millimeter section, it goes up to 50. Uh, so it's 50 in the fore and aft decks, it's 50 in the middle, and then it's 80 over the casemates. So she's pretty, her deck is pretty resilient to HE spam. Uh, and that's one nice aspect of this ship. Her upper belt is 145 and then it graduates up to 300 millimeters. Now, one of the downsides of German battleships is that because they have these uh, quite thick belts, especially the upper armor belt, uh, it's thick enough to allow a lot of, well, battleship shells and even uh, heavy cruiser shells at close quarters to pen this area and take penetrating damage. So that tends to be one of the downsides of the German battleships is that if they have to give a lot of side, which they do to get all their guns into play or get their secondaries going, uh, they do end up eating a lot of penetrating damage. But as is the case with the German battleships, um, she carries a turtle back, so that's, that's this, these slope decks here, uh, basically prevent her from taking Citadel hits. Now, one thing that I should note here is that her main belt actually doesn't come that far down below the waterline. And so if you're making what I call an inside turn where you're actually raising this side of the hull up out of the water, uh, opponents are gonna be able to fire directly into your Citadel uh, underneath your main belt. So um, that's one of the things that uh, you have to keep in mind when you're in brawling situations or making turns is you can potentially raise your this side of the hull or the other side enough to allow opponents to fire underneath your main belt and get into the citadel. But otherwise, she's largely immune to uh, citadel hits. There is a cheek here that if you're at the right angle and you know how to aim well, you can... Uh, avoid or bypass the the, uh, the turtle back and get into the citadel through the forward or thwart ship um, but that requires some practice aiming and rng uh, skilled battleship players uh, look to do that when they're in close quarters with german battleships uh, most of the german battleships have this vulnerability um, but it, again it's something that you have to be aware of and you know how to aim correctly and again have some rng in order to get that punch through uh, in in the right circumstances, but otherwise she's very well armored, uh, very good survivability. She has even more HP than a lot of tier ten battleships, eighty four thousand three hundred. Her torpedo damage protection is pretty mediocre, which is typical of German battleships at only twenty five percent. Guns, uh, I run the four twenties, uh, but you can also have the four oh sixes. The four oh sixes will reload in less than twenty three seconds. Uh, with the main battery modification three upgrade in slot six, which is what I take. Uh, and again, I'll get to my build here shortly. Uh, but um, the reload is very good. And that this is one of the things that she got buffed last year with was they reduced the reload time on both calibers uh, that allows her to get the DPM a out a little more quickly. Um, so that definitely helps in terms of being able to turn out the, churn out the damage. Her turrets are also remarkably fast. So even with main battery modification three and without uh, expert marksman, her uh, 180 degree turn time is only 37.6 seconds, which is pretty quick. And they will definitely keep up a, uh, with the ship in a full turn. So you're not waiting for your turrets to catch up with you when you're making hard turns. All right, secondaries. Um, for those of you uh, who may have played the Palmer during the last round of ranked sprint, We'll be familiar with these uh, two calibers, 105s and 150s. Uh, They're identical to what's on the Pullman. Uh, they have a maximum range of 11.5 uh, kilometers. And uh, the 105s 
at least in my case, I, I am taking IFHE. And again, I'll, I'll talk about my build here in a moment. Uh, get a penetration of 32 millimeters. So the Freddy is, and the Pomeran are the two German battleships where I think IFHE is arguably more useful because they will see mostly upper tier battleships and getting that 32 millimeter pen is useful. Um, but for like the Bismarck and Tirpitz, I don't take IFHE because they see more mid tier ships and the base penetration of 26 millimeters is enough to get through uh, the surfaces of uh, mid tier battleships. All right, um, AA is okay. It's not great. I tend to ignore this number. What I'm looking at is the continuous damage. Short range is pretty poor. Mid range is very strong. Long range is okay. It's not great. Um, so compared to other ships like the Alsace and some of her other tier nine contemporaries, her AA is not particularly strong. She'll do fine against tier eight aircraft. Against tier 10 aircraft, she will not do as well against those carriers. Um, so nothing really to write home about. Uh, maneuverability, she's actually pretty quick. Base speed is 31 point, uh, is uh, uh, 30 knots. I have a Sierra mic signal, so it's 31.5. Uh, turning radius is big. She's a big ship. It's uh, 940 meters. And the rudder is okay at 17.5 uh, seconds for a full rudder shift. Um, it, she's relatively maneuverable for her size as far as rudder, uh, but her turning circle is pretty big, but she's, and she's got decent speed. Uh, concealment, I do not have the concealment expert skill. If I did, you can bring the concealment down to about 13.5 clicks, um, but uh, she's otherwise, she's a big ship. Um, she's going to be pretty easily detected, and that's, that's typical of tier 9 battleships. All right, um, getting to uh, my upgrades. So I do run a secondary build on her. Uh, one thing I am gonna call out here is that I recommend that you go check out Renari, who is a colleague of mine. Uh, he runs a YouTube channel, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. I think he's now calling it World of Warships uh, Brawlers and Beer or Beer and Brawlers. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he's a very experienced battleship player, really likes his brawler builds. Interestingly, for the Freddy, he runs a full tank concealment build, and that's a totally viable build as well. I happen to run a secondary build. So let me talk about what that looks like. Main battery modification one in slot one. Um, I know there's a lot of secondary fans that prefer to take the auxiliary armaments modification to improve the survivability of the secondary mounts. But my experience is the majority of damage done in most games is by the main battery. It's more important to, to protect the main battery. So that's what I prefer to take in slot one. Slot two, damage control. Um, you could take the hydroacoustic uh, hydro search special upgrade to extend the action time of the hydro. Um, since I want to be tanking for the team, I prefer to reduce the chance of flood and fire. That's just my preference. Slot three, since I've got a secondary build, I take the secondary battery modification one upgrade to extend the range and accuracy of the secondaries. Slot four, damage control system modification two to reduce the duration of floods and fires. Take concealment. Um, you could take the, the ship consumables modification uh, to increase the action time of ship consumables. I know this is becoming increasingly popular with some battleship players, but I prefer to have the better concealment. And then lastly, I take main battery modification three uh, for the faster reload. Again, most of my damage in most of my random battle games is gonna, are, or it does come from uh, the main battery. So I, I prefer to improve uh, the performance here. Um, I don't feel that I need to increase the range um, because most of the time I'm operating within my standard range. Uh, if I need a little extra range, I can pop a spotter if I need to. And then, yes, if I were going to go into a battle mode where secondary engagements were going to be happening all the time, I might take the auxiliary armaments modification upgrade to improve the reload time on my secondaries. Uh, but that's the minority in random battles, not the majority for me. So I, again, I prefer to take the main battery modification three. Uh, I For consumables, I do like to take the spotter for better viewing over terrain, like I, when I fired on the Iowa. Uh, it's not, it, sometimes I use it for the range, but most of the time it's for better viewing angles on targets that are on the other side of terrain. All right, um, and then let me get to my commander skills. So I do run a secondary build with IFHE. So priority target, preventative maintenance, 
adrenaline rush superintendent again i was using bft for some of my battles because that was a leftover from the uh, brawler build or the optimized brawler build i had for the pomern uh, during the rank sprint but i moved back to a build that has superintendent i want the extra heal and then for the secondaries i got aft manual fire control for secondary armament and ifhe so i do want to get my 105s to penetrate the 32 millimeter uh, threshold or reach the 32 millimeter threshold so those are my skills. Um, if you're developing a commander for the Freddy, uh, I would start with either a priority target or preventative maintenance. I like priority target because I like to know when I'm getting focused or if there's a destroyer that may be sending torps on me. Uh, and then second, I would take adrenaline rush and then superintendent. And after that, I probably would start with advanced firing training, then move to uh, manual fire control, and then lastly, pick up at IFHE. Again, that's if you're going to have a dedicated commander for the Freddy for the long term. All right, um, a tank build is also completely viable. Um, I won't go over a build for that. Um, there are lots of places you can look online for a tank concealment build, but that's, a, again, an, a, another viable build for, frankly, any battleship. All right, last thing, uh, real quickly on signals, I would take the standard complement of six across the second row here for combat signals. Uh, to uh, November Foxtrot to reduce the cooldown on consumables, uh, Sierra Mike to improve your speed, India Delta to recover more health um, when you do use Repair Party, uh, Julia uh, Yankee Bodus 2 to reduce the duration of flooding, uh, India Yankee to reduce the duration of fires, and then Juliet Charlie to not detonate like the Paul, our opposing Palmer did <laughs> in that uh, match or the gameplay that I had. And then obviously the Mike Yankee Soxy 6 combat signal to extend the range and improve the accuracy and reload of the secondaries. Okay, so some final thoughts about the Freddy. She can be a challenging ship to play, but I would hope that applying some of the practices that I've shared with you here as well as guidance that you might find on some other videos, uh, you can find some synergy with playing the ship. Uh, working on the aiming, uh, applying skills around being aware of your situation, not pushing in too aggressively, uh, keeping yourself alive and positioning yourself in a way that you can contribute without being focused out rapidly, things like that uh, will make uh, the experience with her uh, much more enjoyable. So I hope you have found the input and guidance here useful and interesting. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments, thoughts, and questions below, and I'm happy to answer whatever your questions you do have. And with that, we hope to see you out there in the virtual seas, and we wish you happy sailing. Run. 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 Run.